wanted something, you kept on asking for it, asking for asking, and you die beggar again. So you really do not achieve anything in life until you make something positive. And that's going within. So mind keeps on begging. Why? Why does it happen that no matter what you do outside, the satisfaction never comes? The reason is, or is it? Let's try to analyze. Either we are asking for wrong things to fill up our mind with, or the things that we are accumulating is not registering or not reaching to the mind level. It's like I want certain things, furniture. I want to fill up my house with furniture, but I have it delivered in my neighbor's house. <laughs> and I fill up my whole neighbor's house, and I say, how come my house is empty? No wonder your efforts are directed towards the wrong side. So our efforts are at the material level, but the satisfaction that we're looking for is at the mind level. So how is material thing going to give you the satisfaction at the spiritual level? To have satisfaction at spiritual level, you have to do something spiritual. So that's where a mistake is, that we are dealing with two different things. Our journey is outside, but we want satisfaction inside. Those two things are never going to meet. Matter is never going to generate the spiritual satisfaction. So that's where the problem is. Whatever we are accumulating, we are accumulating outside and nothing is registering inside. Our efforts have been directed towards outside. So we have to change that pattern. So somehow seems like inside and outside there are no connection. It's like the rail tracks, two tracks always remain parallel, no matter what. But sitting over here, you look at it, yeah, they meet over there. But that's limitation of our eyes, not the reality. But if you go there, we find out. But somehow, in the case of mind, it never happens. Between The distance between your goal and the desire always stays the same. It's always parallel, keeps on going all the life. It never touches each other. You never reach to a point of satisfaction. Okay, my, my desires are gone. My goal is met and I'm happy. It never happens. So desires never meet the satisfaction. Just the way the earth and the sky never meet. But if they seem to meet, we think at some point earth and the sky meet. And we are under that illusion. But that's because of the limitation of our eyes. Our eyes are physical structures. And physical structures are limited. And we can extend our eyes with binoculars and wall scientific instruments and and the satellites and all these things are what are our extension you looking at the galaxies billions and billions of miles away how using the binoculars or telescopes and things like that telescopes are extension of your of your eyes basically they are connected one way or the other right you use your intelligence to create an apparatus that extends your vision. So basically it is your eye. So with the scientific achievements, you can get to an idea that earth and the sky never meet. But inside our desires and satisfaction never meets either. What do we need for that? You need an instrument at the spiritual level to realize and <coughs> analyze that your desires and your goals never meet with the satisfaction. Satisfaction will be always remaining elusive goal. Mm -hmm. Those two things never meet. Now, what is the hindrance? Like the eyes, there is a hindrance being the limitation of the eye itself. Mm -hmm. Then what is the limitation within? The vruttis and vasnas are clouding our spiritual vision, the awareness that if you really unbiased way you analyze your actions, you realize that you've been doing this for all these years and it has never given you satisfaction. People tell me, have one gulab jambu. I said, listen, same gulab jambu gave me whatever taste, I still remember it. 
which was 15 years ago. <laughs> it's not going to do anything more. That no, I know for sure. And we all know that, but we do it anyway. <laughs> right? It, it unfair, but that requires certain observation power. The ability, that's intellect. That's vivek buddhi, to judge right from wrong. That vivek buddhi we don't have because vivek buddhi is clouded by vruttis and vasanas. Just the way our vision is clouded by limitations. So we refine it. The science has been employed to improve our senses. And we have improved <laughs> our senses to get a better vision, a better understanding of the whole world. That we are not the center of the world, the galaxies are expanding, all those things, right? We're using more and more and more instruments. We have become so sophisticated, but we have not achieved any level of sophistication within to analyze our own actions. So don't we need science? At least science is not just about matter. It's a scientific approach. There is a scientist in you too, and in everybody. All the kids are born with scientific mind. Why? They ask questions, and that's healthy thing to do. So that is the only way we're gonna go within, instead of just accepting, oh, Shiva is God, this is God, this Mahavir is God, and let's just bow down and bow down and pray and pray and pray and do. What is it doing? Ask yourself, is it doing anything? Has it reached you, given you any sense of satisfaction inside? Haven't you given any bliss inside? It hasn't, drop it and move on and find out even more. <coughs> so the equivalence of scientific achievements is insight to develop your intellect. Vivek Buddhi will take you that is the instrument we have inside, which is a spiritual instrument. So, and we have to do that. There is a story of Alice in the Wonderland. All the kids know, you know, it's the fairy tale. But there is a, a parable in that, and they call the Red Queen's Race, where Alice keeps on running and running and running, and, and the Red Queen, the Queen of Cards, you know, the Red Queen comes in her dreams is basically a dream of Alice in Wonderland and she, she falls through the hole and, and all that, right? So, so one of the things that the whole story has a has lot of philosophical approaches also be, beyond the kids' entertainment, of course. So one parable is the Red Queen's race where the queen uh, attracts <coughs> her and offers the sweet dishes and says, come, 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 come to me. So Alice gets attracted to achieve that, and then she keeps running and running and running and she starts running from the morning and then she seems, doesn't seem to be going anywhere. So she complains to the queens that what kind of world is this that I keep on running and I'm not, distance between me and you is staying the same. He says, no, 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 you have to make more efforts, keep running, eventually you're going to make it, you're going to make it. So she keeps running again and almost to the end of the day, Alice keeps on running and running and she still does not meet the Red Queen. So he says, what kind of world is yours? In our world, at least we run and we achieve certain goal. So the queen laughs. He says, even in your world, you do not reach anywhere. You seem to be standing exactly the same place. He says, in this world, you put your best efforts and with the best efforts, you will be lucky to stay where you are. <laughs> so in our world, you need twice the efforts that your maximum efforts, which is impossible. So that's like a fairy tale. So we are really doing nothing. Like I said, from the point A that you're born to the point B that you die, all your efforts analyze at some point, has it taken you anywhere? If it has not, you have to rethink the strategy that outside material things cannot give you the sense of satisfaction. And if you do not have a satisfied mind, your actions are gonna hurt not just you, but the whole world. So try to understand that all the energy we have done either to run towards the objects of pleasure or run away from it have been absurd. All the running has been absurd. All that energy we can conserve and employ it to the better use. So running outside is a waste, but running away from outside is not running within. It's still running outside. So running away from outside is just a reactionary approach. 
that you see something, if you like it, you run away from it. But then somebody, some Mahatma told you that all this is bad. So you're running away from it, just, just like the Mahatmas have done. And then we run away from this. Either way, we're wasting our energy. So the people who have given us the promises of heavens, which is full of apsaras and where there are rivers of alcohol and beautiful pleasures and all these things, they're still dreaming of pleasures. They think that if you didn't get pleasures this life, you will have it in the next life. But either way, pleasures are on their mind. So the whole approach of the religious leaders have been wrong. And do not, you do not have to have promise of anything. The promise of Paramatma is here and right now. So what happens is once we keep on engaging ourselves in these behaviors, the behaviors become vrittis and vasanas, and they become predefined path in, on which we travel. Like all our attempts to do something, in the beginning we think that's where we believe there is a pleasure. So we do the next day and the next day, and then our life becomes very predictable. And we know the next guy who is going to walk in to the party, we know what he likes. So we offer him that. <laughs> he's, he's very predictable. But running away from it also makes you predictable. Okay, this guy, he does not like it. So do not offer him. <laughs> so, so either way, we are becoming predictable. There is nothing like predictable in this world. So running away also creates a vruti. Oh no, this thing is bad. I cannot have this. This thing is a hell. That also defines you. And definition of any kind is wrong. So to go at the mind level, have no set definitions, is the ultimate freedom from your definitions of life, of ruttis and vasanas. So when you don't have ruttis and vasanas, you become innocent. Because then, like a child, child is unpredictable. You give him something, he will take it. You don't give him something, he won't complain. Either way, he's fine. So the ch children are more innocent because their ruttis and vasanas are hidden. They have not manifested yet. But the older man, he's very predictable. We know exactly how, what he likes, what he likes, what he likes, and all that. So predictability becomes rigid. There is no flexibility. As you get older, your ways of living life becomes fixed. You are not ready for a change. If anything happens, you don't like it. In, in medicine, we know like a lot of changes are coming, right? I talk to some people, you know, some friends who have started their practice like six, seven, eight years. They already given up. They say, I cannot take this anymore. I say, come on. <laughs> you, know, you have a whole life to go. And you keep on complaining, bitching and moaning, and, and you're going to complain. I said, instead of complaining about it, try to find out what are the best way to meet the change. And that keeps your mind flexible. You are not attached to fixed goals and fixed desires and fixed this in life. And you have a fixed ideas. Otherwise, the life becomes so miserable. So you have to have a healthy mind. Healthy mind is a sign of your age. If you have a healthy mind that is ready to accept the change, then you are young. Otherwise, you are old. You can be old at 20 or you can be young at 70. Mm -hmm. So do not have any fixed ideas. Do not think that matter is a pleasure and or do not think running away from matter is a pleasure either. Either way, the race is wrong. So knowing the unknowable requires to believe and realize that all these things that you have wasting your energy has been useless. So return that energy to yourself and go within and have a satisfied mind as a final goal. Otherwise, you will always remain dissatisfied. That elusive goal is never going to be satisfied. So, so much for today. Mm -hmm.